On January 9, 2007, Steve Jobs announced the iPhone to a mesmerized audience. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. The first iPhone announcement seemingly had the whole world in a frenzy. Many were left to believe that it was the first one of its kind. In fact, today if I was to ask the average person who created the first touch display smartphone ever, most of them would likely respond by saying Apple. While the iPhone did have some groundbreaking features that had never been seen before in previous phones, in this video, we are going to focus on two of the most revolutionary touchscreen phones that launched before the iPhone. It was the pioneering innovations of these devices that laid the groundwork for the iPhone. Well, they're calling it the world's first totally integrated cellular communicator ever. Now, as we understand it, you can leave your office without worrying about missing a call, email, or faxes, and it fits right in your pocket. Our story begins in 1994 with IBM. Thanks to Moore's law, IBM engineer Frank Canova realized that cheap and wireless technology was becoming small enough to use in handheld devices. Canova's boss, Jerry Merkel, pitched the idea to IBM as the phone of the future and the development of a prototype was approved by IBM. The prototype was codenamed Sweet Spot. It was decided by IBM to show the device at the November 1992 Comdex Technology Trade Show. This is Simon. I'm Christy, in case there's any confusion. Looks like a cellular phone, right? Well, it is. Simon also doesn't look like your personal computer, does it? But you can create, send, and receive email anywhere. Okay, since we're making a list, does Simon look like a sketch pad, a calendar, an address book, a calculator, or a world time clock? No, but it is. It's an 18-ounce mobile office, a personal communicator. Am I communicating? The device was an immediate success at the show. IBM began working on the commercial product codename Angler shortly after. IBM initially approached Motorola to manufacture the product, but Motorola rejected the offer, concerned that IBM could become a potential rifle mobile manufacturer. IBM then approached Mitsubishi to build the device, and they agreed. IBM entered into a distribution agreement with Bell South, who would sell the device in 15 states. Bell South executives gave the finished product the final name, Simon Personal Communicator. Bell South Cellular had planned to begin selling Simon in May 1994, but due to problems with the device's software, the Simon did not become available to consumers until August 16, 1994. The IBM Simon essentially combined a personal digital assistant and a mobile phone into one device. Simon is believed to be the first commercially available phone with a touchscreen. Though earlier PDA devices had showcased various portable touchscreen technologies, Simon's interface could be navigated with an included stylus and somewhat less easily with a finger. I'm in the lobby of the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco waiting to meet someone and they're late and I've got work to do and I can't find AC or a phone line, but no problem. I am totally computer functional thanks to this Simon PDA from Bell South and IBM. It's a really interesting PDA built around this cellular phone. So with it, I can get a page, I can check my email, I can send or receive faxes, I can make a phone call, of course, and I can use it like a normal PDA. I can check my calendar, I can look up a phone number, even scratch a note to myself on this touch-sensitive screen, and it has a PCMCIA expansion slot here so I can add memory or peripherals. This is just one example of the really cool new mobile computing gadgets that are out there now. Although the term smartphone was not coined until 1995, because of Simon's features and capabilities, it has been referred to as the first true smartphone. The Simon could be upgraded to run third-party applications, either by inserting a PCMCAI card or by downloading an application to the phone's internal memory. The Simon Personal Communicator was a bit expensive. The device's price was $899, about $1,700 in today's money, on a two-year service contract. Later in the product's life, Bell South Cellular reduced the price to $599 with the two-year contract. Six months after its launch, the IBM Simon was discontinued. It sold approximately 50,000 units. It truly was a revolutionary device, 
we will get into why it failed a little later on in the video. This is the LG Prada, a phone made in collaboration with LG and Prada, which is you know one of the most famous fashion houses in the world. Yes, you are reading that correctly. Prada, the Italian luxury fashion brand, actually made a phone in collaboration with LG. The LG KE850 was sold to consumers as the LG Prada. The creation of the LG Prada had been discussed since 2006 when it was first displayed at a design show in Germany. The official launch of the LG Prada was just a month before the iPhone. After the release of the iPhone, the head of the LG Mobile Handset R&D Center was quoted saying he believed Apple had stolen the idea for the iPhone from the LG Prada because it was publicly displayed months before the iPhone. Before we continue talking about the LG Prada, first I need to explain the differences between touchscreens. There are primarily two different types of touchscreens, that being resistive or capacitive. Resistive touchscreens consist of several very thin layers. When someone presses the touch panel, the top layer bends to make contact with the bottom layer, closing a circuit and causing a current loop. Capacitive touchscreens are commonly made of two layers. Since the human body itself is an electrical conductor, when the touch panel is touched with a finger, the electrostatic field of the panel is distorted. The touchscreen's controller can tell where the distortion is on the touchscreen and sends instructions to the rest of the system accordingly. Passive to time. Now that we have understood the difference between resistive touchscreens and capacitive touchscreens, we can begin to realize how groundbreaking the LG Prada was as the first capacitive touchscreen smartphone ever made. In fact, the reason why I didn't include other touchscreen phones in this video is because all of them featured a resistive touchscreen or didn't have a fundamentally groundbreaking innovation like the LG Prada had with the capacitive touchscreen. It has a full three inch diagonal touchscreen display. There is no keypad, so all of your navigation and dialing has to be done through the touchscreen. There's also a two megapixel camera and an MP3 player, as well as, as a video player. One of the downsides to the phone is that it's micro SD card slot is located behind the battery. So that means you have to take off the cover, take off the battery before you can get to the micro SD card. The LG Prada was first displayed at the IF Design Awards in Germany, where it won the overall best design award. The LG Prada sold 1 million units in its first 18 months. It was overshadowed by the release of the first iPhone. In 2021, LG would shut down its smartphone division after years of failing to create a massively popular phone to rival the iPhone and Samsung devices. In 2002, after the iPod launched, Jobs realized that the overlap of mobile phones and music players would force Apple to get into the mobile phone business. After seeing millions of Americans carrying separate phones and Apple's iPod MP3 players, he felt eventually consumers would prefer just one device. Jobs decided to investigate the use of touchscreen devices to see if it would be viable to use them to make mobile phones. On June 29, 2007, the first iPhone was released. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. You don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. So let's go to our phone first. You see that uh, icon in the lower left-hand corner of the phone? I just push it right here, and boom, I'm in the phone. And I've got five buttons across the bottom. Favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and voicemail. To just show you the uh, TV show here. This is an episode from The Office. All videos we look at in, uh, in and landscape. Now, an NBC presentation. Hey. Hey. Who are you faxing so early in the morning? Oh, um, kind of hard to explain. I don't have a ton of contact with the Scranton branch, but before I left, I took a box of Dwight's stationery. So from time to time, I send Dwight faxes from himself, from the future. <laughs> to say the first iPhone was a success is an understatement. 
Thousands of people were reported to have waited outside of Apple and AT&T retail stores days before the device's launch, with many stores reporting stock shortages within an hour of availability. 270,000 iPhones had been sold within the first two days of its release. The original iPhone was discontinued on July 15, 2008. Total sales volume came to 6.1 million units. The phone proved to be an iconic product. Today, it would be difficult to find a feature phone, but everywhere you look, someone is holding up some form of touchscreen phone. Huge reason for why that is, is due to just how popular the first iPhone was. So why did the iPhone succeed? I think it's primarily down to these three reasons. Timing, quality, and Steve Jobs. When it comes to timing, this is specifically aimed at the IBM Simon. It was simply way too early. Back in the 90s, the technology required to pull off a touchscreen smartphone that would appeal to the masses was simply non-existent or in its very infancy. The difficulty of using a resistive touchscreen probably played a role in why the IBM Simon did not succeed. But that's not all. The battery life, for example, only lasted for one hour. And how long did it take to charge, you may ask? A whooping 16 hours. Its steep price tag combined with poor battery performance and limited functionality for the average user meant that it didn't appeal to the masses. Apart from a few business professionals and early adopters, People simply couldn't justify its price. The touchscreen wasn't at all that cutting edge either and was a bit tricky to use at times. Given that the touchscreen was its main selling point, it meant the IBM Simon was not good enough to choose over feature phones. The LG product shipped with only 8 megabytes of built-in storage. No, that's not a typo. It shipped with 8 megabytes of storage. You had the option to insert a micro SD card that could bump the storage up to 2 gigs. The iPhone, on the other hand, shipped with a minimum of 4 gigs of built in storage. The iPhone's battery capacity was nearly twice as big as the LG's, but the lack of quality doesn't only stop with its internal hardware. Almost every aspect of the LG Prada was made of plastic. The front and back were made of glossy black plastic, while a chrome patent plastic ring wrapped around the outer edges, while the original iPhone was built mostly of glass and metal. The LG Prada didn't feel premium at all, whilst the iPhone did. The LG Prada on release retailed at over $750, while the iPhone, a much better device in terms of quality, retailed at $499. It seems as if the LG Prada was leaning in a bit too much on its association with the luxury brand, instead of trying to build a good quality phone. Good artists copy, great artists steal. This is the famous quote attributed to Pablo Picasso and the quote Steve Jobs lived by religiously. It's not being the first that matters. Apple was never the first to create the revolutionary products. They waited for other people to make them, then asked the question of how can we improve them. For example, the graphical interface in Macintosh was stolen from Xerox Park. The iPod was an improvement on the Walkman and the iPhone was an improvement on smartphone technology. Steve Jobs instilled a philosophy into Apple to see what works in the world and ruthlessly refine that product until it is the best. That's exactly the approach Steve took with the iPhone. Everything from software to the hardware was ruthlessly refined to a point where when the iPhone was released, it was at least two years ahead of any other phone, including the LG Prada. And that's the story of how Steve Jobs overshadowed the first touchscreen smartphones. Comment below if you know any other touch display phones that launched before the iPhone. Until next time, keep building the future. Thank you for watching.